what is it actually like for someone with no 3D printing experience to assemble their first 3D printer and start 3D printing their first models? Well, we're gonna find out in this video and we're gonna cover everything, the highs. I am so stupid proud of this dumb little thing. The lows, <laughs> me, God damn it, this piece of <laughs> and everything in between. Let's get started. Hey there, I'm Danny, the 3D Printing DM, and welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. Give me the beanie, AJ. <laughs> Give me the beanie, dude. Give me the beanie. I'm Danny. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm Danny, and yeah, welcome to the channel. This is actually AJ. He's my director of photography, my editor, the guy who makes our videos and our set really nice lately and uh, you know outside of being present for like filming videos and things like that yeah um what experience do you have with 3d printing prior to this absolutely none like i've seen a couple of videos and yeah. i've seen people print stuff uh but i've never worked with a cnc machine or, or anything like that and i knew this and i decided to give him one of the printers i was sent for review to let him assemble it and begin his quest for that beautiful, addicting first print. And I asked him to document the experience. So how's that quest going, AJ? Uh, well, it's actually going So to get this thing started, in the last beginner's guide video, we talked about how to figure out what is the right 3D printer for you. And so me and Danny talked about it a little bit and figured out what was the right printer for me, which I will now go get. The Elegoo Neptune 2 which we chose for a couple different reasons. It's got a pretty decently sized build volume, pretty affordable, coming in at like 180-ish. I'm also gonna put this box down because it's a little bit heavy. Now, let me be honest, I am a, a little bit nervous about building this 3D printer. I've had so much like anxiety around building it that I've just been letting this box sit on my, my dining room table, I think like five or six days at this point, looming over me essentially. My cat actually was more interested than, than I was uh, in getting it built. Why are you doing that? Why are you trying to eat it? I don't understand. Ellie, do you want to make 3D prints? <laughs> All right, we can make 3D prints. So my expectations for assembling a 3D printer came from what Danny told me when we were filming the first beginner's guide video. And I asked how long something like that would typically take. It usually takes like two to three hours, one hour really fast. Yeah, so that was not Totally true, for, for me at least. Oh, and quick side note, Ellie thought the box was a demon, so she abandoned me. So I got the preconceived notion that assembly shouldn't take more than two hours, and that caused me to rush through it. <clears throat> I, may, I may have opened the box upside down. <laughs> and as a result of that preconceived notion, this first step of my journey was by far the roughest. Here you'll see that I found the manual, flipped through it a little bit, and then promptly threw it aside. Now, let me be clear, I do not actually recommend doing this. But to be fair, in the last video, I told Danny, Team instruction follower, AJ? I'm more of a trial by fire kind of guy. <laughs> me too, baby. That's what I'm talking about. So this should come as, as no surprise. Now, I might have thrown the instructions away, but I did utilize Elegoo's video tutorials instead. Opening the box and taking everything out, I actually heard a few like loose screws rolling around in the foam, so be sure to check it to make sure there isn't any loose components or parts. Because as we will find later in this video, screws will screw you if not installed correctly. And then I got literally two steps into the instructions and I got stuck. And I don't mean like a little stuck, I mean like- Why is this just loosely spinning? Thoroughly dumbfounded. So the power supply is bolted to the frame of the printer with two screws. There was something wrong with the holes on the power supply because any screw that I tried, they would not thread in at all. They would just continue to spin and spin and spin loosely forever. I was stumped for about two hours, so I called Danny. So AJ calls me up on Discord and tells me he's missing the screws to do the second step of assembling it. You know, the second step. And he lays out all the screws. We're on video, we check it 20 times, and I'm just like, what the f dude? <laughs> you know, I've never seen this happen before. I don't know, poor guy. 
So day one was done. I didn't have a printer build and I was Me, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was really frustrated, honestly. But hey, if the screw doesn't fit, go buy a new damn screw, which is exactly what I did the next day. So I took the two parts physically with me to the hardware store and I kept trying screws until I found one that actually fit. I couldn't find the exact screw I was looking for, but it threaded in and that was that was honestly totally fine with me. Day two went a lot smoother. Ellie came by to give the project her blessing. And so I spent the next two hours assembling the Neptune. And with the help of our Discord channel, I was able to get through it without any other, you know, real major problems. It felt nice to actually have the thing assembled and in front of me. But I was not out of the woods yet and issues continued to pop up. The legs on these review models were completely warped although it was nothing that a bunch of folded up paper taped together couldn't fix. I also had an issue with the X and the Z axis, which is, you know, basically most of the printer. Uh, that sounds like a bad noise. I don't know how to stop it. I solved the Z-axis by tightening and swapping out some screws that were incorrectly placed. And I solved the X-axis by tightening and aligning its super loose belt. And these sound like simple fixes because they are, but they took me about a week to actually figure out. So with the printer assembled and a lot of the kinks worked out, it's time to move on to bed leveling. <sighs> Let's see if this printer will cooperate. If it doesn't work, then I'm just, I'm pretty much defeated. So let's see. Having heard tales of how ridiculously difficult bed leveling is, I was positive that this was gonna be an all day task. First, I ran through the paper leveling, which was actually relatively easy. Then I was given this bed leveling print by Danny to kind of do a final pass and make sure everything was good. Now, the files that Danny linked me had G code in the folders and me not knowing, I just kind of assumed, oh, that's, the G that's what I should use is that G code on my printer. But that code was for an Ender 3 and so, Okay, all right, yeah. No, you know what, it's great. It's great, that's just battle damage. That just gives a character, it's, it's, it looks. Sorry, but my bad. <laughs> <laughs> After slicing the model myself, bed leveling actually wasn't that difficult. Uh, I, I breezed through the whole thing in, in less than an hour. One hour later, AJ's got the bed leveled and I couldn't believe that shit, dude. It took me like one month to figure leveling out to even get a non-spaghetti thing. It must be nice. So I felt like the level print was not great, but it was good enough to move on to the final step of this process, printing a bench. And so it all came down to this. Would my weeks of struggling and troubleshooting amount in a gorgeous benchy, or would I get a pile of filamented spaghetti? I downloaded the file, I sliced it in Cura, I put it on the SD card, I put it in the printer, and I hit print. And in the end, it turned out totally fine. There, it's, it, it, was, it was almost a perfect, almost a perfect Benji, which is it totally, it was totally crazy to me because I had so many problems. I had so many issues. I mean, yeah, there was some like light stringing, but once I got that cleaned up, it, it looks great. There's, there's nothing wrong with this which was mind blowing because I spent so long troubleshooting and had so many issues that I'm like, I'm like, this is never, this is gonna look like garbage. And it doesn't, it doesn't look like garbage. And that's really exciting. So I don't think we've talked about like how it's going, right? You showed me right. a couple of prints and stuff, but how is it going? So ups and downs actually, yeah. um, I got the Benji printed. It's not a perfect Benchy, but sure. pretty good. I, I think it is pretty good. good. After that, I, I had a lot of changes with my setup. Mm -hmm. And so introducing all yeah. those changes at once kind of, I, I think it messed up a lot of my prints moving forward. Yeah. Um, I started working on this time-lapse device so that I could take um, smooth time-lapses. I was working on that and it was actually really 
interesting and useful because I got really familiar with Tinkercad and Blender and, and actually modeling something physical and going through uh, trial and error with that stuff. AJ's like three years ahead of me already. <laughs> Yeah, so I printed all that time-lapse stuff, mm -hmm. and when I started adding the time-lapse device to the machine, yeah. uh, my prints started being all skewed. I mean, what, what do you call it? What is, what is it when, like, steps? What do you call that when it, when it... It's called layer shifting. Yeah, so I had, I've been having major layer shifting issues. That's been my, my primary issue so far. Um, and it's for a number of reasons. I put it on a really unstable cart. That was the primary reason, and I didn't realize that for a while. Um, but I finally got on something more stable, but I'm still having the issue to some extent. This cat. I know I shouldn't be excited for AJ, but I'm actually kind of excited because that's kind of like what the printing experience is like for a yeah. lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, you have those failures, and he's trying to make stuff, and that's what it's about. You know, it's yeah, a big part of it for sure. I think, and I think at this stage, you know, I was really frustrated in the beginning. Yeah. At this stage, I'm you kind of come to accept failure as part of the process, right? Or some as, people do. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, you can get frustrated with it, and I definitely did, as you'll see yeah, in the footage. Totally. But I've kind of come to go, oh, this is a way to. This is just a way to learn. Like this is a way to go. It's okay, part of the process. This setting in the software doesn't work. My hardware's messed up. Mm. You kind of, you know, and you kind of understand. There's reasons things are failing. It's yeah. not just random. Yeah. And so I think that's the most important part is just like learning learning those steps and, and maturing enough yeah. as a 3D printer to say, oh, there's reasons that all this is happening. It's not yeah. just, you know. It's mechanical and you start yeah. to figure out why, what's going on. Yeah, it's not that just the heavens above hate me because that's kind of what it feels like sometimes. Yeah. And, sometimes and then they're sometimes gone. they'll shine on you. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes so. things work out. So. So have you had like any prints that, that you're like pretty proud of so far? Yeah, the Master Chief helmet that I printed actually yeah. turned out really well. Um, there's some issues with the with the top because um, I printed it upside down, um, and and there's some I had some supports here that kind of yeah. you know messed things up a little yeah, bit. But marks. I think it turned out pretty great, all yeah. things considered. Uh, and this was this I was agree. honestly one of the, the first like after all of the issues I had, I was able to print this, and I was like, okay, we're back. We're fine. Everything's fine. We're back, baby. Um, but yeah, for sure. The most important question I need to ask AJ, would you do it again? I think I would. Yeah. Um, I, I maybe would, would want to try resin as well because in my head, I think resin is easier. I don't actually know that yeah. for sure. There's less moving parts. I think assembly is easier, but then the, the actual process maybe is more difficult yeah. to say. It's but just a different process. For sure. And maybe we find out in a future video. Maybe. Maybe. If you want to see that video, we'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment leave below. Leave a comment. Get down there. <laughs> well, I'm really excited for you, AJ. You know, it's awesome to see him jump into the hobby. And for those of you watching, this won't be the last time we see AJ. Um, he's going to be in more videos on the channel, sharing more of his journey. Um, but thanks, AJ. Yeah, no problem. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do so is to pick up our late pledge on our website, lostadventures.co. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, happy printing and, and happy, happy gaming. gaming. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We'll we can that. just leave that like leave that. that. In. That's fine. Leave that in. <laughs>